Hi everyone, it's Kina McGregor. We are doing the second show of the Miami Yoga Show on Miami TV in South Beach. Super sunny outside, a beautiful day in Florida, 89 degrees. So if you're practicing and you're here in Florida joining me, feel welcome to wear anything that's comfortable, shorts and a little top, so you're comfortable in this nice, humid, beautiful, tropical weather. If you're new to the practice of yoga and you joined last week for the first time, what you might be feeling after you tried that class is a little bit of muscle soreness. So a lot of people have the idea that you know yoga is all about peace and relaxation the vehicle to get you into peace and relaxation is experiencing that deep inner body so it's totally normal to feel sore the first time I ever did a yoga class I jumped into a full two-hour Ashtanga yoga practice I woke up the next day sore in every muscle and muscles that I didn't even know that I had were totally screaming to me so you might have felt that next last week the perfect antidote or the cure for that yoga soreness the day after is more yoga so what Whatever you think you know about the practice of yoga, if you think it's just easy and relaxation or if you think it's just for women, then you want to start taking these classes every week with me. And we'll be doing that once a week, mostly on Mondays, but be sure to follow me and Miami TV on Twitter so you can find the real schedule. So last week we focused on strength. You may have felt some strength in the shoulders or you may have felt some strength coming into your upper body, into the back muscles, into your core muscles. This week we're going to focus on opening up the back and getting the combination of strength and flexibility now when you begin to practice yoga it feels wonderful to open your heart to open your mind we can only grow as much as our mind and our spirit really allow us to be open to that new experience if you're locked down and your body's all tight then you might not actually be you know free enough in your mind to transform or to evolve so one of the greatest blessings of the yoga practice is that open free spirit backbending is the perfect tool in order to get that uh, energy flowing inside of your your body now you don't need any particular warm-up to come and do yoga all you need is to sit down and get started yoga itself is the perfect warm-up it actually brings this combination of the deep breathing with the posture and the focal point so you don't need any particular warm-up in fact it's a great way to settle your body before any other activity um, it also helps concentrate and steady the mind so you're able to be meditative and calm in all of your activities so ready to get started here we go come to a comfortable seated position and we're gonna start off today nice and easy cross your right knee on top of the left and align your knees forward so the knees your pubic bone and your sternum are all in the same line then grab your feet and point your feet all right so you're gonna align yourself all the way forward settle your hips in between your feet and then we're gonna fold forward into the hip joints so take the hands right up above the head to open the shoulders as you inhale controlling and coordinating the breath with your movement and then as you exhale just bend down and drop your head a little bit down. So you should feel as you do this some deep movement in your left hip joint because that's the one that's on top. Let your head hang down and let yourself breathe as deeply as possible. So this posture is a modification of Gomukhasana, which is a Sanskrit word for the cow posture. So we're leaning into the hip joints again, getting that deep openness in the pelvis. Then let's come all the way up and we're gonna combine that with the shoulders. Since the left leg is on top, you're gonna take that left arm up behind your head and this is help opening the tricep. And when you stretch a muscle, it has to be real strong at its upper limit. So first, just to warm up, take that elbow and pull it in and just gently look up. Dangling your left hand back behind you, and then wrap your right arm up gliding your fingertips towards each other and interlace your fingers behind your neck then inhale and look up squeezing your fingers towards each other and looking up you should feel some nice juicy kind of sensations in the right deltoid as it inwardly rotates and moves forward and let that left armpit really open as you look up to the ceiling and let your chest really rise up above so this really helps the energy come right into the body it's a nice easy warm-up for back bending and then gently let go of your hands and come back to the center then we'll do it again forwards the other side so take that right arm up in the air find the right tricep and let it elongate hold on to your elbow move it over okay let's just stay here nice and easy and we're just setting up the posture dangle your fingers back behind you and then take the left shoulder roll it forward and then wiggle your fingers towards each other find your fingers and clasp them together right behind your head keep your belly sucked in point your toes and then inhale and look all the way up and if you're feeling again any muscle tension in your left deltoid it's going to feel much better after and the deltoids that upper arm muscle right there on the left side gently pull the right elbow back it's opening the tricep opening your chest and then gently release the fingers 
Good. Now, we're ready to move on to the same exercise, the cat-cow exercise that we did from last time. So uncross your legs and come up onto your hands and knees. And it's okay that we only did the left side on top because it was just really about the shoulders anyway. So now, come onto your hands and knees just like we did last week and press through your hands. Keep the fingers pretty close together. Don't spread them too wide apart. Inhale, let's extend the spine and look all the way up. And when you do this, you wanna press into your hands. This is just a nice, easy release, a soften release, but strengthen at the same time. And then exhale, press through the arms, sucking in the belly and feel your back all the way around and then inhale lift the spine let it be into a nice extension so you want to let this be easy and relaxed while the belly sucks in and then exhale pull your rib cage in and press through the arms good we're gonna do that one more time inhale so this should be pretty familiar we went over this last week this is a nice easy warm-up taking the spine through extension which is where we are now moving the spine all the way through extension or, or flexion <laughs> tucking under the tailbone and you want to use your abdominal muscles right so this is that balance between strength and flexibility now from here, just like we did last week, step your toes back, come up to that nice plank position, and then exhale, bend your elbows to Chaturanga Dandasana, lower down. And remember, this is real hard on your arms. You're welcome to put your belly on the ground, but try to stay up because it'll make you real strong. Then inhale, roll forward to that upward facing dog, and then exhale, curl under your toes to the downward facing dog. Let's stay for a few breaths in downward dog just to really open up the hamstrings. And if your heels aren't on the ground, don't worry about it. Just press through the knees and suck in the belly and reach out through the fingertips. Pay attention to the sound of the breath while you suck the belly in, pulling up the kneecaps and you wanna gaze right at the kneecaps. Downward dog is a great tension reliever, so if you feel tense throughout your day, just allow yourself, you know, and if you've got the space in your office, just take a nice downward facing dog for five breaths. After those breaths, okay, let's inhale and look forward and then bend your elbows and lower back down to the ground. Easy come up onto your elbows and we're gonna work that back bend. So send your rib cage forward and I want you to point your toes. Lift your kneecaps off of the ground and find your hip bones. Suck the belly in and then inhale, lift your legs. So now we're working our back muscles and you wanna feel your back muscles nice and strong and engaged. So that's that area right up above the butt and right behind the rib cage. Right here, you wanna feel those muscles working. Now in yoga, it's totally fine. Keep your legs up, quadriceps strong. Feeling any burning sensations in the muscles, totally fine. That's like cleansing. The yoga practice is all about cleansing, so keep those legs up, all right? Few more breaths like this, and then we're gonna bring the legs together so you can feel the hamstrings working even more. Your upper body's nice and soft for now, not forever. Then press through the elbows and we'll really rock the rib cage forward. Take your hands back behind you and you're building some nice strength and endurance through your back muscles. If you're doing this with me, you can gaze at the tip of your nose, roll the shoulders down the back. This posture is called Shalabhasana. It's a therapeutic posture, so don't try to crank your spine deep. Just let yourself elongate. Take your hands off the ground, push your fingertips on the ground, squeeze the elbows together. Good, and now separate your feet and we're gonna go a little bit deeper. Take your hands back behind you, interlock the fingers right above the sacrum, and then inhale, lift your upper body a little bit more and let's just let the spine really elongate gaze at the tip of the nose oh your back muscles may be burning now it's okay mine are a little on fire too that's just the body getting a little bit stronger thigh muscles super straight legs and exhale go down good take your hands forward inhale roll forward to the upward facing dog and exhale roll back to the downward facing dog and if you want a little bit of a rest, we can take the knees down and just come to a nice, easy child's pose. And that nice, easy child's pose is going to help reset the spine. You might be feeling some burning sensations right back here. And if you are, just squeeze your knees a little bit together and round your back under to help the whole spine release. And you're going to deepen that on an exhalation. And then let's come all the way forward again to downward facing dog. From the downward facing dog, Look forward, and we're gonna take a little hop, all right? So come onto your knees, hop it forward, and come into a kneeling position. The next posture we're gonna work with is called Ushtrasana. This is a therapeutic backbend that's gonna really give you a full deep breath, and it'll cleanse the inner organs and energize the whole body. So yoga can be fun, it can be hard work, um, but more than anything, it's an adventure into the inner body. So remain curious and go on that inner journey, especially in the next posture, okay? So we're really strengthening our back muscles using the power of the legs. Press into your legs, all right? I really like to 
think about the thighs inwardly rotating, so you want to spiral your thighs inward. Find your low belly and then pull the low belly inside. All right, here we go. Find your rib cage. Inhale, lift your rib cage. It's almost like you're growing taller. I'm not such a tall person, so I always like to think about how can I get a little more length out of the spine. Lift the spine. Anyone who has any back problems or back disorders or herniated discs would really benefit from lengthening the spine. So do that on an inhale. Keep the spine nice and long. Then as you exhale, roll the elbows towards each other. Take your fingers right into the sacrum and exhale, drop your head back. Okay, anyone following along who feels uncomfortable should stay right here and not progress any deeper. Roll your shoulders forward. If you feel compression anywhere in your back, take your body up a little bit more rather than hanging down. Every posture in yoga creates space and it's only when we feel the space can we move in. Okay, so you should be feeling nice and energized, nice and relaxed. Squeeze your thighs in towards each other. Dangle your hands back and place the heel of the hand onto the heel of the foot as you roll the shoulders open. We're going to stay here for five breaths. Ustrasana is such a really wonderfully therapeutic posture. Anyone that's suffering from bone disorders like osteoporosis that force a really deep flexion of the spine can really benefit from this nice, easy, therapeutic back bend. Make sure that the thighs inwardly rotate and the shoulders roll forward and that the breath is long and deep, all right? So we're feeling a nice deep inhalation and a nice deep exhalation. Make sure the belly is sucked in so that you can actually benefit from the energizing flow of the practice. I think that's been about five breaths. Now don't rush out of the posture, all right? Firm your pelvic floor, suck the belly in, firm your thighs. Inhale, take your hands to your waist. Exhale here, squeeze your knees together and inhale, roll your spine all the way up. Now many people who don't coordinate the breath with the movement sometimes feel a little dizzy when you come up. If you're feeling that right now, you wanna put your knees together, sit all the way down and exhale, child's pose. And remember, child's pose is that nice, easy, resting, relaxation position. You can always go to child's pose at any moment if you need a break. Just to balance the strength movement with the flexibility, let's see if we can actually have a nice little lift up here. This lift up is also going to help reset your sacrum and get your whole spine functioning at optimum capacity. So move your hands forward, all right? Squeeze the knees together. Press your hands down and the elbows straight. Lean forward and hold it up here like this for a moment. Press the arm straight. Lift one foot up in the air. Pull it in, roll it in. And then exhale, step back. Chaturanga Dandasana, that push-up position, lower down. Ooh, the push-ups get hard after back bend. Inhale, upward facing. And exhale, downward facing. Again, let yourself rest in downward facing for a moment. The back should be pretty open by now. Then let's look forward and inhale. Jump it forward, cross your feet, and sit all the way down. So that little movement is really good for the hips. I'm just gonna break that down for you one more time because it's not so easy for everyone. You wanna actually jump your feet to a cross-legged position like this, and then after you jump to here, you can sit down and straighten your legs. You can do that in, very, in you know, more advanced versions, but let's just try that one more time because again, it helps reset the spine after some deep back bends. Cross your feet underneath you, pull the feet close to your hips, and then lean forward like this. Roll over your shins, take the hands forward, and then lean your chest forward, Step all the way back, bend your elbows, lower down. Inhale, roll over to upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. From downward facing, step the right foot, step the left foot. Pause here for a moment. So this is that place where I'm talking about. You gotta sink down into your hips, let your hips touch your feet, sit all the way down stretch out your legs, all right? Traditionally, that's called a vinyasa, which means coordination of breath with movement. And by doing that, we actually begin to feel um, that every breath and every movement have a purpose and they're orchestrated to really help the body come into balance and the mind come into greater focus. So now let's continue our journey into some back bending, and we'll lie all the way down, all right? So lying down, we're gonna move into a simple bridge. This simple bridge should be easy and therapeutic for everyone. To start off, we're going to try a posture that's called constructive rest position. So the feet are gonna be wider than hips width apart, the knees together, hands on the low belly. Just to make sure you're completely relaxed, we're gonna have two breaths where you breathe into the belly. Now, maybe belly breathing is not so sexy for lying on the beach because no one wants to see their stomach rising up and down, but do it in the privacy of your own home where you're not afraid to let your belly rise up and down and then, you know, it'll help you be relaxed and happy next time you go to the beach. If it just happens to be South Beach, it's a beautiful beach. Here we are, lower, lower hands on the low belly. 
and inhale. Lift the belly. As you exhale, let it go out, and then exhale, let it drop down. One more time like that. Inhale, breathe into your belly, and then exhale, drop it down. Good. Now, you don't want to take that belly breathing into back bending because we want to keep the belly sucked in when we bend the back, but it's nice just for a moment of, ah, easy relaxation. Okay, ready for a simple bridge? Here we go. All right. First simple bridge, we're gonna take the hands right next to the toe, next to the heels, not, not the toes. That's not simple, that's pretty advanced, all right? Then the knees are gonna track open so that they go right over the feet, okay? Then roll your knees forward, suck in the belly, and inhale as you lift your hips. Don't try to crank your back really tight, just lift the hips nice and easy. Then when you're in this little position, if you can take it a little bit deeper, roll the elbows towards each other and go under the shoulders. Take the fingers, interlock, and place them on the ground. And we'll stay here for five breaths. Now, you might notice you have a tendency to squeeze your butt muscles real tight. This could give you a cute butt, but it might restrict your back bend. So let the butt muscles engage just lightly, not super tight. And instead, let your thigh muscles do the work. So you want to think about the thighs really engaging, press through the hands, and your shoulders are opening. So this is why we started off with that Gomukhasana position to help those shoulders really open. So we're staying here. If you start to feel that your back needs a little support, you can release your hands and place the hands right on the sacrum to support the back. The only disadvantage of doing something like this is that you won't get the strain through the back muscles. So if you can stay engaged through the arms, that's better. Okay. And then exhale down. Now it's totally normal in that posture to feel your thighs really burning. Back bending is not just about flexibility, right? Just because yoga is not just about relaxation. It's about that absolute presence of your mind. So you want to have a balance between strength and flexibility. So here we go. We're going to take it another step deeper. If that was challenging, maybe repeat the same posture again. But if you're ready to take it another step deeper, we're going to try to hold on to the ankles. Here we go. Your fingers are down by the heel. Press the knees forward. Inhale, come to that little preparation position. Roll the elbows under and the shoulders under. Take the hand, hold on to the ankle. Take the hand, hold on to the ankle. And inhale, lift all the way up. Be very conscious now of rolling the thighs towards each other, holding firm onto the ankles, and breathing into your chest. Now my thighs are starting to burn, so I'm guessing yours are too. And remember, that's totally normal. No compression in the back though, all right? We want the thighs to work. The back muscles could even be working. The front body is stretching, but no compression in the joints of the spine. Then let's drop it all the way down. Elongate the spine. All right, so now we should be ready for a full back bend. Full back bend is a super energizing posture. It brings life in through the whole body. Most important thing to remember is you want to distribute the work of the posture through the whole body, not just one area. All right. So here we go to prepare. Inhale as you press your hands right under your shoulders and then exhale here. Squeeze your elbows towards each other and that's that flexibility we got through the triceps from the very first posture that we did. Then send the knees forward, the hips over the heels and come onto the top of the head. Then from here you're going to press through your hips just like we did for that simple bridge. Squeeze your elbows towards each other and this is the nice easy prepare. Let's hang out here for a few breaths in the prepare posture while we focus on the alignment. Create space between the vertebra as you begin to lift the rib cage away from the pelvis, squeezing your elbows towards each other. Firm your thighs and inwardly rotate them. Now when you come off of the ground, don't just press with the arms, but lift your hips high. Inhale, straighten the elbows and bring your chest out over your hands so you can feel that full extension of the spine. We're going to stay here for five breaths. Some of you may find it really easy so you can straighten your legs to get that full deep bend in the upper back, whereas some of you may be more pressed towards your heels or your feet. No problem. If it's really easy for you, you can walk your right hand and walk your left hand in. Just make sure you end up with an even shoulder girdle. So here we are in a full back bend. You should feel energized. There's heating sensations that come through the body. And again, we're going to be here for five breaths. Don't push your back bend if it doesn't feel good. If your back feels crunchy or tight, just leave your hands nice and long or stay in the simple bridge posture, okay? So back bend should feel good. It should be energizing. It shouldn't be stressful or forceful. After about five breaths, let's put the head back down on the ground. Let's rest here. 
The first back bend's really just about the warm up. So, ooh, I think we're gonna do one more, right? If we only do it once, is it really gonna be any good for us? I'm not sure. Let's try it again. Elbows squeeze together. You can do it. Believe in yourself. Have a little faith. Push past your limits and inhale. Take it up. All right, gently push past the limits. And you wanna do it in a safe, controlled environment so that you know you'll be safe and your body will feel better after. And then the hips rise forward. And again, if you feel good, shift forward and forward and forward. You don't have to go as far as I did. You can just hang out back where you were. So if you were more comfortable all the way back there, just leave your hands back there. We'll stay here just a little longer. Your thighs could be burning, the arms could be burning. It's all part of the cleansing process. It's the essence of the yoga journey. And then exhale, head down. And exhale, all the way down. Ooh, I hope you felt the little heating sensations. I definitely got warm from that. All right, after a nice deep like that. What's important is to do a count Okay, so pull your knees into your chest, roll over to the side, and come all the way up. So you should feel energy, right? Heat is energy. So heat comes into the body, and then that's energy. If you don't generate the energy, no one's going to generate it. You know, no one gives you a gift of energy. You've got to generate that energy inside of the body. So forward bend is the perfect counter stretch to back bends, all right? If you have a hard time sitting upright like this, then it means that your hamstrings or or belly might need to release a little bit more. So we're going to start off just nice, easy, and vertical. And this posture is called Dandasana position. Spread your toes out. The chin is down. And we'll breathe into the chest. So this is helping equalize the spine. And try to keep your spine in a nice neutral position here. And then as you exhale, we're going to pivot at the hip joints, not from up here. So don't round your back. Find your hip joints, which are right here. Inhale. And as you exhale, pivot through the hip joints and let your back kind of fold gently forward. Take your hands next to your calf muscles and then slowly walk the hands forward. Now, if you can't fold forward this far, you might want to take a strap or a belt or a, a, a towel and wrap it around your feet so you can hold on. But if possible, just leave the hands easy on the floor. This is a nice, easy counter stretch. It shouldn't be super stressful, should be relatively pleasant. Pull the ribs into the body and then exhale all the way down. Let yourself surrender into the posture and remember don't bend from the rib cage, bend from your waist. Suck the belly deeply inside and even if you're all the way up here with the strap it's still getting the benefit of the posture as long as you focus on the hip joint. So keep that belly nice and sucked in and after a few breaths here let's inhale and straighten the arms and exhale take your hands right next to your hips and then we're going to do that jump back and jump through movement. From here we'll see if we can generate just a little more strength than we did before so we're going to add a lift up. We haven't, I don't know, I mean we did that at the end last week. Okay, so hands forward, suck your belly strongly in, lean forward into your arms, inhale, lift up, see if you can lift both feet off the ground and if you can't just stay there. When I first tried to do that, my feet were not coming off the ground, so don't expect miracles to happen on the first one, just let your feet come off the ground if they can, swing them back like this, then bend your elbows and exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana, inhale, Roll forward to the upward facing dog. Exhale to the downward facing dog. Okay, let's take one long breath in downward facing dog. And one nice long exhalation. And we're ready to see if we can go all the way forward. So here we are, press through the arms, bend your knees, inhale, jump it forward, and come to that little squatting position that we went over just a few moments ago. And if it's possible this time, press through the arms so much so you can wiggle your feet all the way through. Now, to complete the counter movement to back bend, we're gonna move into shoulder stand, all right? So let's lie all the way down. From lying down, the first easy thing we're gonna do is bring the legs straight up. So anyone with any neck issues, any things like that, you're gonna stay right here. I don't want you to go any further than this, all right? If you're even just afraid of being upside down, just lift your feet and stay like this, all right? In fact, this is a wonderful modification for shoulder stand. If you squeeze the thighs in towards each other, you're getting the benefit of letting the legs raise with no stress on the neck. Only if this is comfortable, if you feel relatively free and easy, then inhale, lift your hips all the way up in the air and point your feet. If you feel some stress on the neck, you can let yourself be more in a V position so there's a little less weight. But the full benefit of shoulder stand is really when the spine is straight. We'll just take five easy breaths here. No stress, no tension in the body. Breathing nice and deep. 
Reach out through your toes. Now, a shoulder stand can actually be therapeutic for neck problems if the alignment is really proper. Don't turn your neck to the side like I'm doing now. You should be looking at your toes, and I was a bad teacher right there. So <laughs> look right at your toes. Try not to look so much at the screen. Keep your belly sucked in, and then bend right at your waist, and this is plow posture. If your feet don't touch the ground over here, I want your hands to remain right on your back. So if you're up there, your hands are going to remain on your back. If it's possible for you, interlock the fingers and lift nice and tall through the spine and roll the shoulders under just like we did for that simple bridge then gently release your hands and squeeze the knees towards the ears and then gently let it go rolling the spine all the way down and now this is probably the most important part I want you to let your feet roll all the way open and your hands roll open and just close your eyes for, for maybe a few breaths letting your whole body relax. Now here's where the real benefit of the practice comes in because ah, now the relaxation. Because your mind is calm and free, no other thoughts, nowhere else in the world you'd rather be. A perfect tropical day, blue skies, palm trees swaying in the breeze. And that's also the image of beautiful Miami Beach, but it's also the image of a perfect tropical paradise. So after a few breaths with that image of relaxation, gently bend your knees, pull yourself all the way in, and roll over to the side. Come all the way back up. If you have time, you know, it's really useful to stay in that simple, easy relaxation posture for up to five minutes, or even longer, actually, when everyone's got so much time to do the relaxation. So, what's important when you begin to practice yoga is to understand how the whole thing works, right? So we purify our body from the inside out and it's that purification that helps us feel better in the body. You know, because basically your body needs to be clean just like your teeth need to be cleaned, right? You brush your teeth every day to remove all that plaque and everything that's inside of the teeth. So yoga is like cleaning the body from the inside out. All those backbending postures, they get all the juice flowing in the body and the prana really rises. And the prana means energy in, in Sanskrit. So, so the energy, your life energy, becomes more vital and that vitality is the essence of health. So you kind of glow from within especially after some deep back bends when the heat or the fire of purification is really charging in the body then you'll know that the yoga practice is really working so I hope you're inspired to do the practice and remember if you feel sore tomorrow particularly in your back muscles don't be mad at me but look for the repeat and actually do the same exercises again to really train those same muscles to be strong and flexible open your mind open your heart and you'll get the benefit of the practice go on that inner journey and more than anything believe in yourself believe in the journey Thanks so much for watching.